Good afternoon, grade 12s. Welcome to our business studies class. We are still looking at investment security. Today, we're looking at part three of this chapter. For those who are just joining us today, welcome to our 17th lesson. My name is Hector S. Ngosi. All right, grade 12s. So yesterday, we looked at some concepts when it comes to your, uh, uh, what you call, to your investment securities, right? We looked at your different, uh, sorry. We looked at, uh, 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 um, sorry, the factors that should be considered when making a, an investment decision. We looked at, your return on investment and the risk, the investment period, inflation rate, personal budget, taxation, investment planning, um, the volatility or fluctuations on investment markets. Then we're still busy yesterday with types of investment opportunity, opportunities and its risk factors. We looked at fixed property, we looked at stock fells or features your mutual funds, and we also looked at your the risks for stock fails. We looked at your managed portfolio and its risk. We looked at your fixed deposit and its risk. Uh, we also looked at a daily two-day notice accounts or called deposit its risk. However, we finished with um, we finished with 32 days notice. Today, I want us to start from debentures and explain what are debentures, what is the risk when, when it comes to debentures and stuff. So now, boys and girls, Remember that, what is a debenture? Okay, I need my highlighter. All right. So, boys and girls, you must know that a debenture is issued to raise borrowed capital from the public. So, it's being issued to raise borrowed capital from the public. So, debentures are more like your shares, basically, right? So the lender or debenture holder uh, agrees to lend money to the company on a certain condition for a certain period, right? So debenture holders are creditors, basically, are the people that we owe. Uh, as the company is liable to repay the amount of debentures. So most types of debentures can be traded on the JSE, right? And also debentures holder, um, debenture holders receive an annual interest payments based on the terms or amount of debentures held, basically, right? So you should be able or you should be comfortable with your debentures. Remember, it is issued to raise capital from the public, right? Now, what is the, what is the risk or what are the risks when it comes to debentures? We know that debentures have a low risk so they've got a low risk as they need to be paid back. Companies are liable to repay the amount of the debentures plus interest, which decreases the risk for the investor. Investors may earn a steady income in the form of interest while preserving their principal amount, basically. Right. So, boys and girls, your debentures are very important, and these are the things that you need to know. The business ventures or venture capital. The venture capital is given by an investor or businesses to start up, right? Uh, expand a business in return to have a share in a new or expanded business. That's your business debenture. I mean, your business venture. Your investors should know the type of business or market economic conditions before a business is bought or started. Buying a franchise or existing businesses will be successful if the investor has done proper research, understand exactly what he or she is investing in. Now, let's look at the risks when it comes to a business venture, right? So the risk when it comes to a business venture is that the high risk for the investors if research is not properly done, so there's going to be high risk. 
if basically the the, 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 the research on the business that you want to venture in is not properly done. Inexperienced business owners that make wrong business decision may experience big losses or closing down of ex, ex, uh, existing uh, business. Right. So those were your business venture. Then now let's look at your endowment or life insurance policies or retirement annuities. They love this. Guys, I've once seen it in, um, in one of the past papers for grade 12s. They love the retirement annuities and life insurance policies. Now, with your life insurances, a monthly payment is paid to an insurance company with an expectancy of receiving a predetermined amount on a date in the future. So in life insurance policy, you pay a certain premium to want to an insurance company, right? Let's say uh, other people, they do life insurances that right? when they die, they want their kids to, to be entitled to some sort of money. They, they basically saving uh, 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 some money for their children and stuff, right? Uh, others, they do retirement annuities. They're saving up monies for themselves that should something happen uh, or when they retire, they'll have more or lots of money so that it can last them up until their pension days. Also, let's look at the life insurance is to provide a future expense or give peace of mind to the dependents of the insured. So it also gives you what a peace of mind because guys, if you know that you have insured someone, you don't have to stress or worry going forward because you would know that, you know what, at least there will be some sort of cash that will be left to cover uh, the dependents. Now, what is the risk? Let's see how big is the risk when it comes to life insurance or, 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 or retirement policies uh, or annuities or endow endowment. So there's a low risk, very important. There's no risk at all here. The, the risk is, is low. But let's see as the insured amount will be paid out regardless of the circumstance. So you know that the insured amount will be paid. <clears throat> if you just met their terms and conditions, it will be paid. I know other insurance companies, there's a waiting period that, okay, should something happen to you uh, uh, within this waiting period of six months, three months, we can't pay you. We can only pay you after your, 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 your insurance policy has been active, you know. So it is very important to know and read the terms and conditions, but the risk is quite low here. Also, only the closing down or bankruptcy of the insurance company may result in losing the monthly contributions made up to and the close down date. So, the, 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 but it's likely for insurance company to close, guys, because I mean, if it's a, it's a valid insurance company, it's very likely for it to close unless it's one of those fly-by-nights insurance companies. Uh, those ones definitely will close because I'm sure majority of them are not being registered with the Insurance Act and stuff like that. Unit trusts. Let's look at your unit trusts. Now, unit trust is a collection of investments, opportunities, I mean, options or methods made up by made up of shares in different companies, right? That's a unit trust. So the investment of a number of investors are pooled together in a unit trust, managed by a fund or portfolio manager or an expect. They can be bought directly from the accredited service provider. Very important they can be bought directly from the service provider. Risk for this unit trust. We know that the investment may be made in high and low risks. 
right? Which spread the risk throughout the fund and lowers the risk for all the investors or fund members. Does it make sense? The fund managers are able to manage the risk level of the fund on behalf of the investors. Right. Let's carry on. Sorry, guys, there was a technical error. Shares. Now, boys and girls, when it comes to shares, companies sell or issue portions of its ownership to shareholders in the form of shares on the open market to obtain capital or funds to operate its core business. So remember now, this is another form of raising capital through shares. Does it make sense? So what, how companies raise their capital? They sell shares to the public. If it's a public company, they sell shares to their own existing shareholders. If it's a private company. Shares give holder one vote per share and the right to receive a dividend. Portion of profit, right? That's what we mean by shares. Companies do not have to repay share capital and it is therefore risk avoiding the capital. Also, boys and girls, we know that shares of listed companies are traded in your JSE. They mean public companies. Shares can be bought or sold through stock share brokers to whom brokerage or fee will be paid by investors. Types of shares differ with respect to the claims to profits or dividends, voting rights, claims to assets, should the company be liquidated. Also, your ordinary shares can be divided into different types. Your blue chip, your bonus, your growth income, defensive shares. Your ordinary shares have no special rights or restrictions and may be yield or earn higher dividends, but also have a higher risk. Types of preference shares are cumulative, non-cumulative, participating and non-participating, redeemable, non-redeemable, compatible, non-compatible. These are your preference shares types of preference shares. The preference shareholders mostly received a fixed dividend, right? And are paid before other <coughs> shareholders. Because these ones are preference shareholders. Now let's look at the risks when it comes to shares. Shares have low or medium risk. We know that. over a long term or investment period. Ordinary shares have the highest risk as the investor may lose the full or part of investment when the company is dissolved or bankrupt or liquidated. Preference shareholders risk is lower as they have preferential claims on assets of the liquidated company may receive some compensation before ordinary shareholders. Share prices are linked to factors that investors cannot control, like for example, your economic conditions, your operational success of the company. <clears throat> your share price are volatile, unstable, unpredictable. Share values may increase, decrease, sharply, 
with hours, which contributes to uncertain of the value of an investment on the short term. Very important. Let's look at another investment. Your, S, your RSA retail savings bonds, right? So when we're looking at this one, why people have to join this retail savings bond? Is to encourage saving. The South African government offers South African citizens the opportunity to invest in saving bonds. Two different types of bonds are available. You've got your fixed or inflation linked retail bonds. So it's either you can have a fixed rate or inflation linked rating savings bond, retail savings bond. A market related interest is determined when investment is made and remains fixed for the term of the investment. Interest is earned half yearly on 31st December and 30 September and paid out the bond to bondholders investors bank account. It cannot be used as a security to obtain loans. So creators cannot have any claim on it. It can be inherited by a nominated beneficiary when the investor dies. The risk is very low as an investment is made in a government who cannot disappear or go bankrupt. It is a safe investment as it cannot be sold on open market, not exposed to market risks. All right, now I want to just touch base on forms of investments. And I want us to look at their impact of the four forms of investments. Now grade 12, I want you to uh, um, put your heads up. Forms of investments, very popular question in your grade 12 syllabus they love asking this so please 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 make to a point that you do understand it remember under business studies you do not have to cram the notes you do not have to learn weight by weight the only thing that will help you to grasp everything for business studies is to understand so if you understand when, you, when someone says forms of investments and you can sort of like understand that, okay, there are actually four of them. There is government or RSA retail savings bond. There are unit trusts, there are shares and fixed deposits. If you know what is a fixed deposit, you'll be able to talk more about. If you know what shares are, you'll be able to talk more about. If you know what unit trusts are, you'll be able to talk about unit trusts from A up to Z because you understand them and you know them. If you know what are RSA retail savings bond, you'll be able to write everything that they ask about RSA retail savings bond because you know about it, you know. So you can write from the bottom of your heart and you can write from A up to Z. Now let's look at the impact of these four forms of investments. Let's start with the impact of RSA retail savings bond or government retail bonds. Let's look at the good things about this type of investment. We know that it guaranteed returns. So the returns are guaranteed basically. As the interest is fixed, for the whole period. So the returns are definitely guaranteed because the interest is fixed, it's not variable. Interest rates are market related and attract more investors. Interest can be received twice a year. Interest is usually higher than on fixed deposit. Also, the retail bonds are listed on the capital bond markets on the JSE 
the low risk or safe investment as it's invested with a with the South African government which cannot be liquidated. No charges, costs, or commissions are payable on this type of investment. Investment may be easily accessible as cash may be withdrawn after the first 12 months. Sorry about that, guys. Um, so what I want us to do is to look at uh, 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 the, the impact on four forms of ownership uh, tomorrow. So today, we're just going to end here. Then tomorrow, we're just going to finish off. Uh, I hope everything it makes sense, grade 12s. Please feel free to ask questions if you do have. You can always email me. Uh, please study hard grade 12s. You are almost there. You are only left with one month of which is August. September, you are starting with your trial exams. Um, then you're going to get like a two weeks break. I mean, I mean, you're going to get like sort of like a, a, a month's break of which is October. Therefore, October again, we'll be looking at more things to cover your, 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 your November exams. So guys, please always, always study hard. Make sure that you understand majority of the work and start now, guys. You don't want to start late. Start now so that you can prepare for future and you would know what you want to do. From my side, thank you so much. Thanks for tuning in and have a lovely evening. Goodbye.